So this morning, uh, we found out that Julian Assange uh, the, the, is going to get extradited to the United States, right? As as it stands, the the Assange team is planning on appealing this decision, but the but the UK High Court has decided um, that they are going to extradite Julian Assange. That the quote assurances uh, the United States provided that they will not be mean to Julian, uh, basically saying, well, we won't give him a life sentence. Uh, and we will, we won't put him, we won't treat him badly in a supermax prison, you know, which is, which is all bullshit. If supermax prisons were going to change and be about reformation, then we would see that change happening now. But that is not the case. They are terrible places. The prison industrial complex, its only goal uh, is recidivism. The more people that are in prison, the more money the, get, the prison gets and the more money these companies that have invested in, in prison systems get, right? Like the, the privatized prison industry makes a shit ton of money. Uh, it is it is also a nightmare to be in. Um, Julian Assange has already been in a maximum security prison. He's served out his sentence, right? The bail jumping sentence was like 50 weeks in prison. That ended last year year that ended april of 2020 he had served his sentence out uh and they're still keeping him in prison over this bullshit lie that he would be a flight risk well put him on house arrest you know let him stay in the uk let it you know or or let him be in a hotel let him stay with a friend uh, he's been in the ecuadorian embassy this whole time put him on house arrest give him a little bit of little bit of room to stretch his legs He's not going to flee the country if he's got a fucking ankle monitor. Now, I, I, I truly believe that even that is a little too far. But to appease the bullshit capitalists that want to fucking keep him in prison, well, well, there you go. There's a way for you to keep him under lock and key of some kind and not torture him at the same fucking time. But they didn't do that. They claimed he was a flight risk, kept him in prison, tortured him. Uh, the guards catch COVID. He 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 is at risk of catching COVID. His mental health has been in decline for for the past decade. He's basically been in isolation in the Ecuadorian embassy. He was seeking asylum because he knew the United States, which has a penchant for going after journalists that reveal its war crimes would come after him as well. And they did. And so he was seeking asylum. And so he found asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy. Now, when is seeking asylum a crime? I I, I don't I don't know. There, there there is there is no justification for that, right? So when the presidency shifted in Ecuador, the U.S. basically bribed them for $4 billion as, for, uh, as an IMF loan to basically say, we'll open the doors to the U.K. embassy and let you drag this dude out. Claim some bullshit bail jumping uh, charge, which, again, not a legitimate charge. But nothing about this has been legitimate. Right. Not one one bit of anything that is that has happened throughout the course of. Uh, extraditing Julian Assange has been. Legitimate. Their key witness, their key witness committed perjury. During the initial court case, the lower court case committed perjury. How is this case not thrown out immediately? He came out and said he lied. He lied in court. He lied under oath. Not only that, but this guy, it, this guy is legitimately a hacker. Uh, he stole fifty thousand dollars from WikiLeaks, and diagnosed sociopath and a repeat child molester. And plus, the diagnosis of sociopathy means he doesn't feel bad about any of these things. And he's like on the run now. That's true. That's the FBI. That's the intelligence service, intelligence agency 
That's your key witness. So there's no case there. That, that I mean, immediately at this point, once people find that out, they should. They, the first question they should ask is, why is there a case to begin with? The United States lost. So the appeal of the January 4th decision um, comes because they believe that Julian Assange won't actually commit suicide in the torment of the American prison industrial complex, right? They're like, no, 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 we'll, we'll treat him nicely. We're going to be nice to him. We've already been so, we gave him a book. I mean, it was a book about how we want to kill him, but we gave him a book. How are you going to assure his safety when you were planning on assassinating him? Which was a Yahoo News story. A Yahoo motherfucking news story. That's a corporate mainstream story. And I talked, we, Kevin Gasola and I talked about that. So if you listen to the previous episode of this podcast, you will probably hear us talking about this Yahoo news story about the plot to assassinate Julian Assange. And you want to assure his safety. And the UK High Court believes that despite this plan to fucking assassinate him, and go after his kids, because that's what you see. Global, the, the 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 Spanish company that the CIA hired to to spy on him illegally was doing. They also wanted to go after his family. What assurances can they provide? How how are they going to prove that? And they didn't have to prove it. Then I mean, they didn't prove it. And this decision still happened. Now, you can sit there and say, well, the court's decision's been made and we kind of got to go along with it. And but, but that doesn't, just because a court made a decision doesn't mean that it's morally correct. In the society we live in, justice and morality are two separate things i.e., the Kyle Rittenhouse case. You saw how that went down. Right, and I'm not going to go into the details of that, but I morally believe that the decision was wrong. That kid killed people. I think he went out. There's a lot of evidence showing that he went out looking for a fight, and when he found it, he got too scared because he's a child. Morally, what the United States is doing to Julian Assange is wrong and remains to be wrong and will continue to remain to be wrong. You can piss and moan all you want. And you can sit there and tell me, well, that's just the way the world works. Well, maybe it fucking shouldn't work that way. You ever think about that? You ever think if we don't actually make a stand for the way that we think the world should be, that it will continue to be unjust? Life is hard. Well, maybe it fucking doesn't need to be. You ever think about that? You ever think about maybe putting war criminals in prison? You ever think about maybe putting corporate criminals in prison? People that defraud other people, people that take other people's lives. Where's the International Criminal Court going after these people that willingly killed civilians in uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan and killed journalists? You gave Obama a Nobel Peace Prize. That motherfucker bombed a wedding. But Julian Assange deserves to be in prison. The CIA wants to spy on you nonstop. Why would they want to do that? Because if there's any dissenting thought, they can capture it and then come after you for private conversations that you might have, opinions, articulations that you might share, explorations of thoughts and ideas that you might be having with friends. This is thought police stuff, man. 1984 was not a manual. It was a warning Well, if you have nothing to hide, then... Well, if you have nothing to hide, then why was the murder of Iraqi civilians and journalists guys classified information? 
I can use that same rhetoric right back at the United States government for that. Because of this decision, um, it you know I don't I don't know whether how long I'll stick to this this mindset or not, and 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 maybe I'll have a little bit of time to ruminate on um, on these things here. But I'm I'm done being nice to people about their ignorance towards Julian Assange, right? When these people come out and they say, well, he stole these documents. He's, he's, he's hacking into the DNC and stealing these documents. I'm done. I'm done being, being nice to you about it. If that's what you believe, then you are a propagandized fool. There is so much evidence, so much information out there to disprove that he's a hacker. He is a publisher and a journalist. He takes leaked information from protected sources, corroborates them, investigates them, and then publishes them so that people know the truth about what's happening behind the scenes of these incredibly large and incredibly rich and powerful organizations, which it is our responsibility as citizens to hold their feet to the fire. They're public officials. They work for us. It's not the other way around. So... If you are going to engage me in a conversation and you're going to start by spewing propagandistic bullshit at me, just know that I have zero patience for said propagandistic bullshit. And I'm not going to walk you through it like a child anymore. I've, I've spent years doing that with people. I really have. Um, and I'm kind of done with it. I'm also done with pretending this country is a democracy. It's not. You know what democracies don't do? Treat a journalist like this. You know what democracies don't do? Excuse war criminals. You know what democracies don't do? Try to squash the working class when they organize and ask for decency and basic human rights. This is not a democracy. It is a corporate authoritarian oligarchy. It's got the dressings of a democracy, and that's about it. How many people in this country want health care? How many people actually want to be in endless wars around the, around the world? Far more than what the, the quote, legislators, our, our elected officials, tell us that. 72% off a Fox News poll want health care. That's 72% conservative people want health care. That number is probably far higher once we start incorporating everybody that's already been in the fight for health care. I would guarantee you once people figure out what the war industry actually is, and I have, and I have a video on it, and how it operates... People will not support the wars we have going on around the world. People won't stand for us meddling in other countries' elections. What Julian Assange helps us do is figure this stuff out. That's why that's why this information that's why this is so important. If Julian Assange successfully gets extradited to the United States, kiss dissent goodbye. It will be the first step in criminalizing dissent. And here's the thing. None of this stuff is going to happen overnight, right? It's not like Julian Assange gets extradited one day, is put into prison the following, and the following day there's an order that goes out and says that dissent is illegal. No, it'll, it'll, it'll happen slowly. The way true authoritarianism works is making people like the frog in the boiling water. You don't boil the water first and throw the frog in. The frog will immediately jump out. You let the frog kind of sit, and then you turn the heat up. And that's what they're doing. 
that's what they're doing with the uh, with with the, with with this Assange decision. So letting them do that is letting us get boiled alive because we will start losing a lot more of what little freedoms we have left. Where are the free speech warriors? Not only that, where are the mental health warriors at, man? Where are the mental health advocates at? The, the, the United States government is basically saying Julian Assange is faking his mental health. That's what that's what their case was built around. This man is being tortured. Tortured. Proof. UN rapporteur on torture said he's said he's he's a victim of torture. And we are all okay with that. Really? Think about whether this is this is how you want a society to operate. I believe people are much smarter than 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 they believe that they are. The information is there. It's just we just need to learn how to access it. We just need to learn how to ask the right questions. We need to learn how to how to uh, utilize the critical thinking portions of our brain. We don't. We choose fear over over that any day of the week. And that's why the propaganda against Julian Assange unfortunately works. So if you want to be success, if you want to get past all this and not sit there and do mental gymnastics nonstop, then you need to start using the critical thinking part of your brain.